Okay, so today I want to keep talking about pinch pots and I want to kind of talk about some alterations that you can make to your initial form that you created um, to help um, further your the portrait part. So um, right here is what I made in the last demo. Okay, so I've got a pinch pot here and I've got a pinch pot here. I slipped and scored them together and added that snake or coil um, to make more of an hourglass shape, okay? Um, I've taken a lot of time to smooth my pinch pots both inside and out. Um, we want every part of your project to look really nice and neat and clean. And if you remember from your tile project, it's a lot easier to smooth as you go rather than trying to just get everything together and then smooth everything, that'll be a lot more work. So um, I've tried to smooth as I go. Now, um, for the Pinch Pot Portrait Project, so, you know, assuming this will be the bottom portion and then this will be where your portrait actually goes. Um, and you could, you might flip your, um, the Pinch Pots that you put together, you might flip it both ways and see which you think is better. Um, now I'm kind of thinking that maybe this is going to be better for the top part, but you can kind of just decide. Um, but if you remember from the PowerPoint, when I showed you the Vincent Van Gogh examples, um, there was more of a spherical head on top. And so this quick demo is going to kind of show you what to do for this pinch pot project specifically to continue using that pinching technique if you want or need more space here at the top to actually put your portrait on there. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute, um, but do note how I've smoothed it um, and note how it does not look like two separate pinch pots anymore. It looks like one, um, one complete form, okay? So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and I'm going to get some fresh clay. I'm gonna wedge it, okay? Remember we always wanna wedge so that we can eliminate all air bubbles. Okay, and I would say you probably want about the same amount of clay that you used for both of these. If you remember, uh, we tried to use about the same amount of clay. Um, and you all, you have to think about the proportions for your specific project. So if you know that you want the bottom portion maybe to come out a little bit more, to be a little bit larger. If you think about a portrait, this is gonna be the shoulder portion. Um, this would essentially be the neck and then the portrait, uh, the actual face modeling will go up here. So you kind of have to decide what proportions you're gonna go with. You might want these two pinch pots to be quite different sizes. Um, and again, you just have to decide what's gonna work best for your project, for your portrait artist, and for your design, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with, I might have a little bit more than what I used for those ones, okay? And I'm gonna start that pinch pot process again. So if you don't remember what I did for that pinch pot process, here's a review of that. So wedged really well, we're making a nice ball sphere of clay Okay, and then we're gonna pinch into it. So here's where the pinching process starts. So I'm gonna use both thumbs. I'm gonna pinch in, and then I'm gonna keep pinching. Now, reminder, if you keep pinching out like this, your pinch pot is gonna get wider, okay? Um, and our goal is that it fits on there. So we don't want it to get too wide. Um, Remember that we wanna make sure that we are paying attention to all parts of our pinch pot. So once I get the width about where I need it to be, I don't really wanna make this top lip any wider. So at that point, I can kind of pinch up. And remember, I'm gonna kind of cup it with this hand. Okay, general pinch pot reminders. We wanna make sure that we're not letting our top lip get too thin. Okay, remember quarter of an inch is always kind of our magical measurement. So don't spend too much time pinching up there. Don't let it get too thin up there. And on the other side of that, we wanna make sure that we're not letting the bottom part around here stay too thick, okay? So 
we want to make sure that we get to that quarter of an inch measurement throughout your entire pinch pot. So you kind of have to just feel around, pinch, pinch, pinch to a quarter of an inch until we get a nice looking pinch pot. And if you think about it, this is going to be the top part of the head. So you might think about that as you form it. Okay, again, so I've gotten a little bit big. So to kind of remedy that, I'm just gonna kinda, I'm kinda squishing it in a little bit and kind of compressing the clay back together. Maybe if you have some thinner spots, you do that in those spots so that that clay thickens up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna check that again. All right, and now we're looking pretty good. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna make sure that I smooth the inside. I'm holding my hand on the outside of it so that it doesn't flop, but we always want everything to be as smooth as possible. So I'm gonna take some time to smooth that. And remember, my demos are always just to show you the technique. It's not to show you what a perfect A project with perfect finishing touches and craftsmanship is gonna look like. It's really just to show you the technique. So you should always be going beyond what I'm doing in the demo. I'm gonna tap, tap, tap to make sure that that lip is nice and flat so that it'll connect really well. And then I'm gonna use my smooth kidney to get all those bumps and lumps smoothed out on the outside portion, okay? Even though we can't, we're not necessarily gonna see the inside very well, we do always wanna make sure that that's smooth, but then where we are gonna see, we definitely want to be smoothed. Okay, so I'm gonna get that as smooth as possible. Remember, soft plastic clay isn't always gonna get as smooth as you want it to be. It's not gonna necessarily do everything that you want it to do because it's still soft and plastic. So we just mainly want to get the big lumps and bumps out and get it looking as smooth as we can get it. Okay, so now I'm going to bring back my original two pinch pots and I'm going to slip and score these two together. Okay, so remember deep score marks. Okay, look at those score marks. Nice deep score marks because we want to make sure that it sticks. So if you had anything in your first project fall apart, it may have been, maybe you did slip and score, but you didn't get nice deep score marks. Remember, we want it to look like Velcro and then same thing on this. So we want to score both pieces, okay? And um, if your scoring tool is getting, is picking up a lot of clay, you want to clean that off because that's going to prohibit really deep scoring marks. So. I want to make sure that we get nice deep score marks. Okay, so I've scored both. I'm going to add slip to one. Doesn't matter which one. Remember, we want our slip to be nice and spreadable. It's our glue. And again, we don't want to be wimpy with our slip. Okay, we can always wipe off excess. Um, but if you don't put enough, your pieces might not stay together. So be generous, okay? So score both, slip one, and then I'm going to wiggle this on. Just kind of thinning that out, that looked a little thick. Okay, so then I'm gonna wiggle, wiggle that on and kind of compress it on, okay? And then I wanna make sure that I smooth my seam. So obviously I've created a seam. I don't wanna seam because not only does it create a weak spot, but it also has created a line in what will be my portrait, my head. Okay, so smooth kidney is really good for smoothing out seams. So smooth kidney. Okay, and again, we're doing the best that we can knowing that it's soft plastic clay. It's not necessarily going to get as smooth as we want it for the end product, but we want to do as best as we can. Okay. Now 
I have essentially created a giant air pocket up here, okay? So I've enclosed this area. There's no air hole to get out. So I've created a giant air pocket that would explode in the kiln if I don't do something. So you can kind of take advantage while it's a big air pocket, you can kind of push, push it around a little bit um, and really get the form that you want. Okay, think about what artist you have and you know, what, what form you want up here, okay? Now, um, obviously this is not a very good planter with it enclosed. I'm not gonna be able to put a plant in there. It won't hold anything. I'm also gonna take this time to kind of smooth with my sponge. Since I've gone over there with the smooth kidney, now I can take the sponge and I'll show you in a second. The sponge will kind of smooth out any of those other marks and bumps. Okay, I'll show you this. And remember, we always want just a damp sponge. We don't want to make our surface slimy. It's going to make it very difficult to work with, okay? So that helped a little bit more, you can see. So if we think about this being a head, but we also want it to be a planter, and we've also created an air pocket that would explode in the kiln, we have a lot of things that we need to do here. So what I'm going to do, so this is the top of the head, okay? Um, so I wanted a little bit more of a clay canvas to work with to get my portrait on there, but I still need it to be a planter. So next step, you can either take a fettling knife or a needle tool, okay? Your choice. I'm going to use a needle tool, and I'm going to cut a hole in the top, okay? So it'll still give me more room to get my portrait on there, but it will also allow me to still let it be a planter. So I would recommend maybe kind of just sketching it on there first. If you want to use the circle stencils to make sure it's a perfect circle, maybe you don't want it to be a perfect circle, but I'm going to kind of sketch it on there and then kind of look from a couple different angles, make sure that's going to work. And then I can cut through. So this now does two things. By cutting this hole, you can kind of stab it and grab it out. By cutting this hole, I've now given myself a planter again. Um, so I could actually plant a plant down in there, but also it has released this enclosed air pocket. So now I can see all the way down into that first pinch pot. And so I don't have an air pocket anymore. Now, a couple things that I wanna do, if you look down in there, there's the seam where your two pinch pots connected. Seams are weak spots and they don't look good either. So I'm gonna reach down there with my thumb and I'm just smoothing that seam into each other. And now if you had taken the time to smooth both pinch pots as best you could before connecting, this should be somewhat easy because you shouldn't have to do a ton of work. It should just so I'm kind of smoothing down and then across. If you're having trouble getting in there, maybe you didn't cut your Okay, so um, maybe you didn't cut your hole big enough if you can't get down in there very well, but we want to make sure that we smooth that seam. Seams are ugly and seams are weak spots, okay? And then I'm also going to clean up this top edge. So if you find that it's maybe a little bit thicker, you can continue pinching, okay? And we just wanna make sure that this top edge looks nice and is not too thick, okay? I can also take a sponge and kind of fold it over and go around. If you can get in there, I would take your sponge, again, holding on the outside and smoothing across that seam again, okay? You can also look at this point and I would look at what this looks like from the side, okay? Is that, you know, think about where you're gonna add your facial features of your portrait artist. 
Um, are you gonna have any hair? Is there gonna be room for the hair, for any hair at the top? Um, and just kind of decide, you can kind of, you know, pop, pop it out. Um, if you wanna, you know, round the edge a little bit more. Um, but kind of look at the silhouette, look at all angles and make sure it's gonna work for the planter, but then also it's gonna work to get your portrait on there.